thanks for joining us for another episode of Already One, a Sports Friends podcast. Each week, Coach Ben and Coach Kyle share their insights, interview special guests, present teachable moments, and offer some extra words of wisdom. The victory is ours because we've already won. Welcome to Already Won, a Sports Friends podcast. I'm your host, Ben Wildman, on Already Won. And today, you can see, I'm flying solo in the studio. S-O-L-O. And that is because Kyle is with our very special guest. This week, live on location. You know, I'm based in the UK. So Kyle is over there in the US. And he's went to visit a farm and visit our special guest. But guys, remember that if you're a Christian, God has given us the victory. So whatever you do, do not quit. And remember, this podcast, Already Won, is a podcast for you to bring relevant guests to talk around this amazing tool that we can use, sport, to share the good news of Jesus Christ. And incredibly, hopefully, this podcast can help you, whether you're a coach, whether you're a player, or whether you are a fan, to remember that incredible victory. So today, we've got a, an, an NBA legend, someone who's played basketball at the highest level. He's played with some greats. He's played with this guy right here. Kobe Bryant, that one of the greatest NBA players ever. He's played at the top level, and he's also played with some sports friends legends. He's played with Kyle Apps, our very own Mad Dog, has played on the same court as an official as our guest today. And that guest is Marcus Landry. We're really excited, and we're going to go live where Mad Dog and Marcus are. So let's go live and bring in Marcus and Kyle. Hey, Kyle, have you got it? Uh, can you hear us over there? Can you guys hear yeah. me okay? Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. We're ready to go. Here we go. Hearing you guys loud and clear. Great to be with you guys. Yes, today we're with uh, Marcus Landry, global basketball legend. I'll have you know that, Marcus, we were teammates at one time. You probably don't remember. And on the refing, when we ref the game at the, at the victory. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, teammates, why, what are you talking about? <laughs> Play together. I had to throw that in there. <laughs> oh, man. So that, that's my other thing. You seen no puzzle so, look on my face. Yeah, like, there was the stripes. <laughs> there was the stripes. There we go, yeah. So we won't go back there. there You're a, a local high school legend with Vincent. Uh, somehow you went to Madison. Uh, you were eventually knocked out of the NCAA tournament by <clears throat> Steph Curry's Davidson. Sorry about that. Sorry to bring up the past. <laughs> I thought this was a positive interview. <laughs> we're, getting, we're getting there. We're getting there. So since uh, after college, you were a seasoned vet trying across the globe with stints, notably with the Knicks, Celtics, Bucks, but also in Spain, China, and Korea. Uh, I believe your wife is Edo Descent. Is that, do, you, do you know your... Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, which I, 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 so being in Nigeria, living in Nigeria for 16 years, we kind of have a, a, a great history of uh, things going on in Nigeria. That's awesome. I, I also know you play basketball too, so maybe the next interview will be with you. <laughs> I know it's not Wisconsin, it's Matt Marquette. Yeah. Get there. <laughs> um, yeah, today we're going to see, see how his faith and the sport connect. So Marcus, where did you grow up and how do you know Kyle? All right, so I grew up in uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Uh, north side of Milwaukee, uh, really close to Vincent High School, where I went to high school at. And um, no, my, my relationship with Kyle kicked off uh, less than a year ago. So when we were refing um, one, of, one of these games, uh, I believe it was at the Pfizer Forum. And uh, yeah, that's where everything kicked off at. Same question. How'd you get into basketball? Well, basketball started off at a really young age. Uh, and it wasn't my first sport. Actually, baseball was my first sport. So basketball just kind of took over as I got taller. <laughs> but um, it started with, you know, my dad uh, taking us to the park, us watching him play basketball. My mom was a really good basketball player as well. So it, it was just kind of something that was in our blood. And we lived, um, like I said, the north side of Milwaukee. We had a basketball court in the front yard. And that's where mom kind of wanted us to stay. So we were able to the only thing we really had was to to pick up a basketball and play. So, um, and that's kind of why you see in my family, the three oldest um, all went on to play, play professional basketball. 
because we were the one beating each other up at a young age. Oh yeah, so let's introduce your family, your wife and your children. Yeah. Should, should so there. yeah, I'm, I'm, I got, I'm married. I've been married going on 18 years. I uh, got married in college to my wife, Ifueko Landry, uh, who played at the University of Marquette, unfortunately. And then uh, I, we have, uh, how many kids we got? Four beautiful kids together. <laughs> we got Marcus Jr. Uh, we have Mariah. Well, Marcus Jr., who's at um, uh, Stevens Point playing football right now. Mariah, who's going off to play in Minnesota basketball. And then we have Michaela, who's my horse girl, and Madison as well, who's the youngest, who's also one of my horse girls. So, yeah, we got a big family. Good. What was your, what has been your favorite team or place that you were able to play? Um, I, I've I've been fortunate enough to play a lot of places, as you mentioned. But one of my favorite places was probably Italy. Uh, being able to be there with my family, um, there was a, a point in our lives where we just kind of were growing closer together. Uh, our youngest daughter, Madison, was born in Italy, and then it was kind of towards the end of my career, so things were really really rolling really well i was able to be mvp leading scorer a lot of different things like that so everything just seemed to click there and then of course the food the pizza all that good stuff just put it over the top so and how did you see your faith grow or diminish during your career whether it's in high school college throughout your pro career how did you see it living out how do you you know well, I, I believe that I'm a big believer of faith, and faith is probably one of the things that got me through a lot of, of ups and downs, um, just holding on to believing that God would take care of me in the end if I remain faithful. Um, have I always been faithful? No, I've had hiccups along the way, but um, man, my, my career... Uh, the ups and the downs were, were truly a, a path and a segue for where God has me at right now. So it, it's been huge, and I wouldn't change it for the world. How do you see mixing sports with ministry? Is, there, is it one or the other, or can, is there a way to kind of mix and blend them together? I believe, I believe you can mix um, your ministry with your, your um, faith and your beliefs. It is just very important to not be, uh, you know, wavered or knocked off your your ship um and that that takes a lot of commitment in prayer and fasting um as an athlete you know fasting may be hard sometimes so you have to choose and pick way different ways you can do that but they can definitely mix um one of the ways that i've been able to do that was with my family right being overseas really having time where we we worship together we pray together um just really honing in on the um, the worship and the praise together as a family. And then as far as ministry and delivering the message to other people, um, more so in basketball, it's probably more so of being a, a light and being an example, right? You're faced with many different things. You're put in certain situations that are not necessarily um, a reflection of who Jesus is, but you have to be there, right? So finding moments to be a light in a dark place um, probably was the hugest thing for me and the hugest thing for, for athletes to come. Did you notice, I guess trash talking would be a different language in, right. when you're traveling to different, to different countries, but is there ways to kind of bring positivity, bring light during the game, during practices that you could see maybe that that's a good, uh, a good example of reflection of who Christ is? Yeah, I, I think so. And I think that depends on your, your personality um, as well of how, you know, when you talk about trash talking, I was fortunate enough to play with one of the best trash talkers of all time, Kevin Garnett. And I never was a trash talker up until that point. And I'm still not, but there are some trigger points that, you know, if you, you, you mess with me a little bit and you start to say some stuff, I'm going to trash talk with my game. And, you know, I'm going to say, hey, you know, hey, next time be quiet. And I'm going to show it more so with my game than my mouth, but I've learned over the years, how to trash talk positively, <laughs> if that makes sense, um, or in a, a positive way. But um, showing your light on the court is just always, you know, being a good teammate, uh, really vocalizing uh, what you believe in and standing firm on your standards and your values. 
more than anything, because that's what people's that that those are the things that people are going to see. Mm-hmm. Your standards, your values, um, and then your boundaries. You know, being an athlete, you have to make boundaries, um, and that that was huge for me. Growing up in Milwaukee, I'm sure you didn't have a farm there. You didn't grow right. up on a farm. So right. how did you kind of come about this uh, this lifestyle? Well, it's it's it goes back to what you said. It's all about ministry and really during the stint of basketball, really trying to find out what my calling was after basketball. Um, and I believe that later in my career, I, I just started studying land and animals because I really wanted land when I was done playing. And uh, I was in Korea in 2019 and I tore my Achilles, which was my first injury of my career. And wondering what I was going to do and really felt, you know, I was going to go back. And I always told God, look, if you you want me to stop playing basketball, you're going to have to take me out completely. Like, there's no in-between. Well, three months later, after my injury, COVID hit. And that was my that was my takeout, um, yeah. right? Not that I was fearful of COVID, but I knew that I could no longer put my family in that kind of atmosphere overseas and in different countries. Uh, things are better now, but at that moment in time, that was me really listening to the voice of God and saying, you know, this is your time to make this move. And we found this property mm-hmm. and it was uh, basically identical to what God showed me in a dream. Mm-hmm. And that was the next step. Um, so you talk about ministry and life after basketball, trying to find a space where I can minister to kids families, show them a different way, and then be that example as well. And that's what we do here on the farm. So the way that I keep busy (laughs) is caring for lives like animals, excuse me, caring for the animals, showing people that there are um, many different ways and streams that we can connect with with God's creation. So, um, but there's, you know, I believe there's only one way, but we can touch him in many ways. And this is one of the ways we have chose to um, share our light and share what he's given us with others. So, so give us the name of the farm. And then uh, you, you, I see your family's involved. Yeah. How does that play? And so the story of the name and then how does it kind of like a year round, like what's the farm do? You can say do stuff with children and right. the school and stuff. So okay. just give us the, so, the big pitch. So the name of the farm is Beulah Family Homestead. And a lot of people ask me, like, man, why, what does Beulah mean? You know, so Beulah means marriage. Um, obviously, it's, it's in the Bible. Um, so you have Beulah, which means marriage. You have family, which we all know what that means. And then homestead means inheritance. So I feel as though God has brought us to a place where he wants us to be married to this. Mm-hmm. Um, and he wants people to, to be married to whatever they're committed to, whatever that calling is, whatever he's, wherever he's put them at, he wants them to be married to it until death do, do them part or until he separates them, right? So that is, that is huge for us, right? And then leaving an inheritance to our children. We receive the inheritance from God, which is huge. And then be able to give one back to our kids is, is huge as well. So yeah, it's a family affair. Everybody's involved. Um, my wife is, is always gardening and we're sharing those, um, those or we're sharing the fruit with the community. Um, we help run a food pantry. We started a food pantry before all of this, um, before COVID hit. And so we bring a lot of produce to um, underprivileged families or families just in need um, or, or just struggling in the moment whether that's the meat that we have here on the farm, the vegetables and all that stuff. And then one of the things that I love is that we get to bring kids out here. Mm-hmm. We bring kids out, we bring families out to programs that we have here on the farm to introduce them to um, sustainability and what that looks like and to share the gospel through animals and gardening and all that good yeah. stuff. So. Kids who children wouldn't have or families wouldn't have the opportunity. So are they coming from in Milwaukee and yeah. other places that are- yeah, so a lot of these a lot of these families and kids are coming from the inner city of Milwaukee. Um and that's kind of where we 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 have focused on really showing them something different. Um I also run a free basketball camp in the inner city of Milwaukee to to offset uh the basketball season 
So we have this aspect of sports and farming because they go hand in hand. Mm. They really do. So, Marcus, like we know, uh, we assume your wife is the better basketball player. That is true. But the big question is, who is the better farmer? <laughs> I would, you know, she is the better basketball player, and I would probably have to chalk it up to her being a better farmer as well. So, she she gets all the accolades, man. I'm I'm just a a servant uh, leader, um, and I'm here so I don't get fined. That's a good answer. She's in the back. Right there, so. <laughs> all right. Yep. Good, good. So how can we follow what you're doing? Is there, is there a website? Is there social media? How can we uh, keep up with what you're doing? Yeah, we have a, a wonderful team uh, in Graphic Terrace who's constantly putting out content on um, social media. Uh, there's Instagram at Beulah Family Homestead. We have Facebook as well, Beulah Family Homestead. Um, we have our website, BeulahFamily.com. And you can also follow our personal pages, uh, Marcus Landry 11 as well, to find content there. Um, so all of those, those uh, outlets are, are pretty huge. And we, we run a lot of classes here at the farm too, canning classes, butchering classes, sausage making classes. I mean, we're really pushing out to be and teach uh, sustainability um, so their families can become more aware of the, the things that are going in their body. So those are some ways that you can, you can find us. So um, please follow and keep up with what we're doing. So I'm a parent of a newborn infant and uh, you've got a lot of four children and they play sport. What would you say to other parents who have children who play sport? You guys hear me all right? <laughs> that, that's a really good question. And the first thing I would ask the parents to ask themselves, right? Am I trying to live a dream? Am I trying to live my dream through my child? And that's the question I think parents have to really face um, because I've seen the worst of the worst. I've seen parents try to live their dream through kids who were really, really good athletes, but it came to a point where they, uh, they decided not to play basketball because of the pressure. But that would be question number one. And then just, just support, put them in good situations. Um, and then bring balance to it all. I think the biggest downfall to a lot of athletes that there's no balance. There's just all basketball, basketball, basketball. But there's so many things that go along with basketball, right? You have to be able to communicate. You have to be able to have skills in, in counting and in, in finance. Uh, you have to have skills in uh, being a you know, people person. There's so many things that go into it. So really try to um, get your kids diverse. And then the main thing was get them a foundation that is uh, founded on Christ and it'll help them and it'll always bring them back to a place that they know is safe um, if, they, if they do fall. So that would be my advice. That's great, great. And then lastly, any favorite God story or anything that you have to share that, that you definitely, I mean, it's probably a daily thing, but where God, you, you knew God was speaking or touched or some, somehow how God intervened in your life and just what was that meant for the trajectory of your life? Or... Yeah, I mean, God, he's constantly intervening in my life and he's constantly speaking. Um, but I think um, it's the daily, it's the daily peace that he gives me um, with the things that we're doing here at the farm. Um, because if, if we're honest, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a black farmer, you know, I'm out here farming. I was an athlete and I go from playing basketball to farming. It's just not something that you hear. It's not normal. Um, so him giving me daily peace and knowing that he has his hand on all of this and he has me in the right, right place um, and being able to share that and be comfortable in this space. He's, he has never left me nor forsake me. So it's daily, and I, I have plenty of stories to share, but um, I think the biggest thing is him constantly giving me peace. As a farmer, what will you be doing to help children and youth learn about farming and themselves? So I think it's huge with, with what we're doing here because we get to pick all of this up and put them in spaces that is not normal. So like this summer, we'll be taking the farm and we'll be taking the farm right into the inner city and 
at the Wisconsin State Fair where we'll be having kids that are part of our programs, showing horses, showing uh, chickens, showing cows, being a part of something they wouldn't normally be a part of, right? And it's the same thing with basketball. You take basketball and you pick it up and you put it in a space you wouldn't normally be able to have it. But like you mentioned earlier, you bring that component of your faith into it. You bring that light into it. And that's what we're trying to do. So at Wisconsin State Fair this year, I believe it's in August, we'll have a huge presence. We'll have our Clydesdales out there. We'll have some of our, our chickens, our pigs, hopefully, and cows. And you'll be seeing these kids showing amongst their peers, um, raising money for them to go to college as well, even possibly. So it is huge. Uh, we're just trying to have an effect on the next generation. So the same light that we're trying to sh uh, show people, they get to show and they get to show it at a young age. So I think that's huge as well. No, perfect. Like a... yeah. Anything else? I mean, I'm let you open it up. Oh, yeah. Hey, I can talk all day. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. I think that's. I think that's it. Then I'm kind of losing connection. You're gonna have to take us out, man. I think we've just lost connection with the guys over there. Maybe uh, Marcus and Carl are going to play a bit of money pot, maybe with the, the goat and the sheeps, perhaps. And don't forget the bonus footage at the end of Marcus Landry giving the mad dog a tour on his farm. Well, well, I enjoyed that a lot. That was so good hearing from a former NBA player. I mean, I, I grew up loving basketball, and to hear that, I thought that was fantastic. I loved, you know, Marcus talking about a few different things there. I loved um, in his a competitive world of elite sport. He talked about, you know, how we needed to try and find a way to trash talk positively and to let the game do the talking. Uh, and I had someone who once tell me that the world of sport is a perfect place uh, for discipleship. So it's, it's not just like Sunday school. It's something where it's it's not just theory. It becomes real. And, and you know, Marcus shared there how he had to try and be a light in the dark places that he found himself um, as a player. And, you know, I really found that great, you know, his insight around boundaries, about setting boundaries. Um, so maybe if you're a player, maybe that's something that you as a, as a Christian player, you know, what boundaries are you setting? Um, how do you let your game do the talking and not get involved in some of the negative side of things that happen in the world of sport? I thought that was a really good challenge. And it was clear that Marcus had his foundation built on Christ. And that meant that he could live differently in the world of sport because he knew um, his identity in Christ. He knew who he is and his foundation was firmly on God. And now he's in the world of farming. And I think it was really in, in inspirational kind of hearing him talk about this idea of calling and being married to your calling. And I wonder, you know, you guys listening, you know, made me think about, you know, my calling and being married to that. I thought that was really powerful. Like leaving an inheritance to the next generation. I thought that was so powerful. And he's doing that now in the world of farming. And maybe you guys are listening or involved in the world of sports ministry or maybe somewhere else. But you know, we're inviting you into being part of the sports friends world where we are trying to leave an inheritance to the next generation. We train um, young coaches all around the world that are part of churches, church centered sports ministries who are ministering to the next generation in 19 countries. Uh, so that that idea of, you know, leaving an inheritance, you know, it's a, it's a challenge and it's an encouragement to continue to think about how are we uh, leaving an inheritance to the next generation. And I love how Marcus has been intentional now sharing the gospel through uh, through, through farming and, and through education and knowledge through that. So awesome stuff from sport to farming. And I love that connection, how he's bringing his faith into the world that he's in right now. So um, the servant leader, Marcus Landry, absolutely awesome. I'm going to finish with a little quote. Wildman's weekly wisdom is this. We are what we repeatedly do. Therefore, excellence is not an act, but a habit. And that was by Aristotle. And it just strikes me that, you know, what Marcus has done in his sporting career has been excellent uh, and he's been really successful. But now he's trying to do something in in the world of farming uh, with with young uh, kids and the next generation. You know, um, he's doing that. And that is something where, you know, excellence is not an act, but a habit. And he's doing that on his farm with his family. We are what we repeatedly do. Therefore, excellence is not an act, but a habit. That's it for this week's folks. Thank you so much for joining us on Already Won. Thank you so much to Marcus Landry for joining us. Do give him a follow and do, of course, follow us on all our socials that you can see on the banner if you are not an audio listener. But guys, don't forget to hashtag it Already Won and we'll see you next time for another podcast.
stay tuned for bonus footage as Marcus Landry gives Kyle a tour on the farm. Some bonus material on the farm with Marcus Landry. Right, as you said, it's this that time of year where everything still kind of looks yucky. Some stuff kind of wants to come into play. Here's our, our garden. This is where my uh, wife and I do all of our garden and all of our growing for family. When did you move out here? We moved out here in uh, 21. We walked down from the garden to the goats. Um, actually, two said this little one, the other one right here, is the youngest one in here. It was born Christmas morning. Here's a peculiar sight. A sheep with four horns, also known as a Jacob's sheep. Like, do you eat the goats? Do you eat the eggs? Or yeah, we eat the eggs. We haven't we haven't eaten uh, any of the goats or anything like that. Couldn't. We don't have enough to, yeah, to yeah. you know make that happen. But we do have uh, like lamb in our freezer, okay, okay. gyro meat, and all that stuff. And we do we do sell it as well. So we leave the goats, and Marcus shows me where the chickens and the goats are outside together. Is it loud and obnoxious? As we leave the chickens and the ducks, Marcus is chasing down the goose that got away. We'll kind of go around. Okay. We'll check out the kids. Oh, yeah. yeah, they'll just they'll go to town and eat. And we'll move them around depending on the time of year. We try to practice on like regenerative farming where we move them around into those garden beds for a few weeks at a time and let them dig all the yeah. stuff up. And, do that so they'll one of those guys will be part of a butchering class and then part of one of these pigs will go to to a family and stuff as well and, and they're actually really clean animals it just when it rains or something like oh, that then it, it's him. then that's why it gets money uh, leave the three little pigs and go down inside the barn in the winter i kind of use it multi-purpose really nice when you know summer hits and all that stuff. Um, all of these, majority of these were born in uh, right November. So they're they're young. They're young. They'll still give milk periodically. They can start learning to, to drive horses. Yeah. Our, my huge thing is like give them something to do that oh, they, yeah. they never have been able to do. So we actually got a great deal on this cart um, at an auction. And now we're just trying to raise money to get it wrapped and painted. The kids are super excited about that, <laughs> which what makes it huge. And then we can do parades. And yeah, yeah. It's coming. Everything <laughs> is coming along. Slowly, but, but sure. All of our, our animals are out back here. Um, but, you know, it's muddy right now, so... Uh, like, we bring, the, we bring the horses, the Clydesdales in every day, so we have three Clydesdales that we use to work with kids, work with youth, and take them in and enter them to stay fair. Uh, and then we have our Highland cattle over here as well. So yeah, the Clydesdales are huge. Everybody knows them as yeah. uh, well, watching horses. They're my favorite horse. They've been my favorite horse since I was a kid. So <laughs> the little pony there is, is my daughter's. You know, I feel like that's every girl's dream is to have a horse at one, <laughs> one point in time. So she's the youngest. Um, actually, two of my daughters have horses. So uh, one of the Clydesdales belong to my one of my daughters, and then my youngest daughter, the little pony, brown pony there, belongs to her. So the oldest girl, she's not really in the horses. So she ain't this little guy, he's considered a, a Jacob sheep. So the Jacob sheep is uh, the sheep, if you're familiar with the story of Jacob in the Bible. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Jacob sheep actually have, they can have up to four to six horns. So my wife and her friends, I mean, I went to the factory supply and someone was giving away quail, so she hatched wow. she hatched quail out of uh, or in the incubator. And uh, just a week ago, we started getting quail eggs, which is this is what I love to do. Man. This is the fun part. Thanks for joining us and Marcus Landry on his farm. That's right, BeulahFarms.com. Thanks again for joining us on Already One, a Sports Friends podcast. Please like, share, and subscribe on your favorite stream.